Okay, we're live. What hey, everybody. This? Welcome to another uh, live Hangout on Air. It's me, Lady Ada, and Mr. Lady Ada here at the Ada Fruit Factory. It's time for our show and tell, so that if you would like to show off your cool project that you worked on last year, maybe you're starting on working on this year, it's a good time to come by, show it off. we got some people here, a little bit of room for more people. We'll be out of here at 7.50 so we can get ready for our 8 p.m. show, Ask an Engineer. We're gonna kick it off with no and Pedro. Everybody else, please mute your mics, and we'll call on you when it's time for you to show something off. Hey Pedro, what you got printing this week? Hey guys, happy Wednesday, everybody. Hey, so this week we thought we'd make a very simple project. So there's a sort of a trend going around with uh, folks that have 3D printers. It's to sort of make and design your own fidget spinner toy. So fidget toys are these little. Oh, here it is. Are these little kind of mindless fidgeting toys and they're kind of supposed to be like stress relieving toys but and you know they're for kind of for folks with like ADD or ADHD but you kind of don't have to have a disorder to really like them at least I do so uh the Adafruit logo is actually in the perfect shape of a spinner since it's fully symmetrical and it has these five pedals uh so when I first designed this it was just kind of like to 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 test uh Fusion 360 and see if I can get a nice curvature solid using T-splines and then as I saw more and more spinners, I was like, dude, this would be a great fidget spinner toy. So the whole thing that, that makes it spin is a 608 ZZ ball bearing, which is kind of the standard ball bearing. So what I have is these little 3D printed kind of inserts that go inside of the, the bore. And then there's another piece that kind of clips into it. And one of the things that makes it really spinny is to kind of remove the non-removable uh, cover and to remove the grease kind of with alcohol and then you add some uh, synthetic lubrication like for, for high speed performance um, skating stuff. So that's what makes it spin a lot faster. And the way the 3D print this is kind of neat. You actually print it up this way, vertical, so the layers kind of stack up on top of this way. Yeah, but in order to do that, yeah, in order to do that you need support material. Um, so using supports is kind of one of those things that you try not to design for. But with this one, it's kind of necessary. And it came out really nice, surprisingly. So uh, on the show earlier today, we talked about some slice settings. And we did some comparisons on different printers and different slice settings. And uh, it's a kind of neat, fun project. So if anybody wants to check it out, we have it on all of the shareable sites. And I have a learning guide, too. So that's this week's project, a really simple toy. Thank you, folks. Good work. <laughs> Thank you. Nice. Next up. We're gonna go to Sally, and then we'll go to JP. Hey, Sally, welcome back. How hey, Sally. Hey, how are y'all? Hey, good. all good. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. Um, oops, I just lost. Yeah, there it is. Um, the challenge, because I, we've been doing this renovation, the challenge was to create something at all, <laughs> and the suggestion was a light up <laughs> Christmas stocking. The renovation got final inspection on Friday, so we're Ooh, good. Yay. And we passed. <laughs> So I made the Christmas stocking that when I plug it in, it will light up, unless I've broken something. There we go. Oh, nice. Ooh, nice. So, oh, that's nice. It kind of has yeah. little lasers. So like yeah, it's got like a tree design. Yeah. <laughs> this is great. It's like yeah, snow. It's, it's snowy branches, yeah, and that's supposed to be snow. Yeah, and That's when great. and when the camera when it looks at it, it looks like there's like lasers coming off of it. It's very oh cool. yeah, <laughs> it's really neat. Oh, that's funny. All right, and how and, and what type of LEDs did you use? And and uh, they're the sequence that I make with the print beads, the two oh, millimeter SMDs. Yep. Um, and I, it has an Arduino Nano in it, mm -hmm. um, which I recycled from the original iteration of the Galaxy Code. Oh, but cool. But that means that there's this nightmare of wires inside. Whoa. That's cool. Um, I like that side. Yeah. <laughs> That's the inside. It's, it's not pretty, but um, that means I can control each one individually. Yeah. So. That's cool. It's actually the first time I've seen someone use our PWM driver for LEDs. I say, hey, you know, you don't have to use it for servos. You can use it with LEDs, but it's not usual that people do that. Oh, well, there you go. Yay. Um, so it worked. It's not usable, but it worked. <laughs> it looks beautiful. Oh, that's great. Yeah. That's fun. But, um, and now I get to go unpack everything into the new room. Awesome. Congratulations. Right. Well, congrats. And we look forward to all your projects uh, this year. So thank you so much. Yeah. And of course, email support at adafruit.com. There's probably 
plenty of room somewhere in this new room for an as seen on the show and tell sticker. So. Oh, I've been sticking them on the filing cabinet. Okay, they're, yeah. They're not great on cloth, but they're good on filing cabinet. All right. Send an email. All right. Send it off. Talk to y'all later. Okay. Bye later. All right, JP, what you got going on? Hey, everybody, and Happy New Year. So I have my final Lucio Blaster here to show today. And uh, let me show you. Line that up in the camera. Okay, so there it is. So this is uh, my 3D printed Overwatch cosplay blaster for the character Lucio. Uh, and I've got my speakers and NeoPixel rings for the sides. I've got a large 60 NeoPixel ring and a large speaker in the front. And I have some little strips of uh, the mini NeoPixel, uh, what are these called, the skinny mini strips to do the VU meter. And I've got a power switch here, a mode switch, and then accelerometer, or uh, rather tilt switches for a couple of the effects. And I've got a couple of triggers, one for the main trigger pull, and you push that one with your finger for the secondary fire. So I'm going to turn it on, and I'll drop the uh, brightness on my camera so you can see it a little bit better. And... <coughs> it's pretty bright. There's the regular trigger pull. There's the secondary. Got the little VU meters there. And here's the reload. So that's just a tilt switch. And then a tilt in the other direction is the special. And then we can switch to the speed mode, which changes the song and changes the color of the lights. And I've also got a uh, little NeoPixel jewel in the back here, which indicates the uh, mode you're in as well. It's intense. Wow. <laughs> Epic. There it is. Is mm -hmm. that um, color filament? Um, someone want to know, or did you paint it? Uh, I used colored filament, actually. I was thinking of painting it, and I may try to do that to uh, add some little details and maybe age it a little bit. But going with the colored filament, if you can get away with it, sure is nice, because then you're not... Yeah. priming and painting and the, the look of it uh, with PLA, or I'm actually using PLA, P, uh, PHA for most of it. It has kind of a nice it's shiny, specular shiny look to it. Um, and I have, uh, so I put up a, a couple of previous guides and videos on the, the progression of the circuit building up to this. And I'm about to soon-ish release a um, sort of first draft work in progress of the guide for the final build. And I'm going to be shooting some uh, some new photos and uh, documenting that better for crazy people who want to try to build their own. Yep. Well, it looks great. Congratulations yeah. on that. Nice work. And then tonight on Ask an Engineer, we have some of your mystery box stuff too. Oh, excellent. Yes. You want me to show a, a, a little brief glimpse of that? Do we have time? Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. So the mystery box is... Not, not the upcoming one, the, the current one. No, the current one. Yeah. So it's not a mystery yet. Don't ask. Nope, don't ask about that. That's, uh, <laughs> yeah. So this is the, let me turn my brightness back up. There we go. Get that in light. There we go. So this is the uh, nautical crate mystery box, and that's the guide and video that I've just released. And this is a hobby store crate that you can pick up. I got it at Hobby Lobby for around $10. And it is locked. Uh, the idea is to use this for something like an escape room or a magic trick or a scavenger hunt or uh, whatever you like. And through various clues, the participants would come to the um, conclusion that they have to find some artifact that helps them open it. And there might be a clue to direct them on exactly where on the box to place the artifact. So what I'm using is a magnet that's embedded in this little uh, Christmas ornament that also has this nautical theme. And there's a position on here where it's placed that will trip a solenoid. And now you can open up Very the box. Very satisfying click. It is a satisfying click. <laughs> so uh, this is actually the one I used uh, that I created for the video. I actually built a second one to demonstrate that I have over here, uh, which I'm actually going to send to a friend of mine who is throwing a birthday party for her daughter and was asking about using this as part of the scavenger hunt. So uh, this one I built with the full uh, interior available to put prizes or a, a present or something inside of versus the other one where I built a false bottom and 
was just laying like playing cards on top. So that's the space that the battery pack and the solenoid take there. Uh, and there's a reed switch up here that's used. So I thought uh, this was actually, I think largely Lamar's idea was to do a project that used very, very few components and just uh, no microcontrollers, no programming. It's just those those three parts, really, a reed switch, a solenoid, and a battery pack. So you can do really a lot. Like, like, you can do a lot yeah. with it, yeah. Yep. So that uh, you'll get to see the full video on tonight, right? I love, I love sensors, sensors that are around. Like you can do some split sensors. Yeah. Yeah. So great, right? Yes, pretty elemental, and, and there, there's uh, something satisfying with getting sort of a mysterious little effect out of those few parts. OK. Click. Next Click. Up, uh, Richard. Richard, welcome back to Show How are you doing? What is your project? Hey. Hey, guys. Uh, so unfortunately, my project, I think, just crashed. But um, you might notice I have another one of my clouds here. Uh, this is actually a MQTT server on a Raspberry Pi inside a cloud. Uh, so it is an MQTT um, service. Uh, uh, cloud service inside of a cloud. Uh, and I have some LEDs hooked up to it. I'm using Home Assistant to control it. Unfortunately, uh, the Raspberry Pi and the LEDs are running off the same power supply. And I think uh, it just drew too much power and crashed both of them. So um, what I've been working on is having this is like a, a Internet of Things hub uh, for my house and also here at the Makerspace. Uh, so this will do like what my previous clouds have done, being able to tell the weather and use lights and sound uh, to uh, predict what the weather is. Up, oh, it just came back online. Um, but then also this will be able to control other um, other devices throughout my house. So let me just check to make sure that's working. Yeah. So uh, what I'm using for uh, the interface with Home Assistant. Uh, you just set it up, and this serves a web page over your local network. Uh, so you can see it on my phone. Uh, and if I tap the switch, it's going to turn it on. Uh, what I love about doing this locally is how responsive the colors are. So as I'm dragging my finger across, oh, I think I just did it to white, which drew too much <laughs> current and crashed my server. So <laughs> i got to work on the power supply for this thing. Uh, but that's what I'm working on. I'm also testing out to see if Home Assistant and Mosquito will work on a Pi Zero. Uh, what I'd love to do is be able to make this a portable thing and have the Pi Zero act as a host as well. So you can have uh, basically Mosquito and an MQTT server in your backpack or something, and then all your wearables can network with that. Uh, I could see that being used in like field research, so you can. Um, kind of drop a bunch of sensors uh, out in the woods or something, and then as a researcher, just kind of walk through the environment and collect data. Uh, so I'm trying to, to see what I can do to, to make uh, really simple, self-sustained uh, Internet of Things ecosystems. Very cool. Okay, cool. Okay, well, of course, get a scene on the show and tell us if you want to stick it on the cloud. Email support at adafruit.com. <laughs> clouds. Clouds. All right, next Crashy up we're going to go to Phil B. Hey, Phil B, what you got oh, going? Hey. Do you see me okay? Because, yeah. okay, something here crashed, so I'm just flying on Instagram. Was it your cloud? My cloud crashed, yeah. No, I, I got no updates on my screen, so this is this is uh, mystery navigation. Um, anyway, if you can see it good, then you can probably yeah. see um, the uh, eyeballs uh, blinking here, which is revisiting a project I did uh, a couple years ago now. But if you move uh, it back just a little bit more, a little bit more. Yeah, you can. Oh, right on my own face. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, updated these eyes, which were previously on the Teensy. I've made a Raspberry Pi version, and um, this is using a. Um, yeah. You can barely even see it. It's such a tiny board on top of the Raspberry Pi. Um, so. Bill is spectacling. So. Yeah, you put your eyes, and then I'll put these eyes. OK. Lots of eyes. Um, anyway, adapting the project for the Raspberry Pi, which is it's a, it's a very different environment to, uh, to be doing this on. Um, the old one, um, there was a whole conversion process you had to go through. People like customizing the eyes. Everyone has a favorite monster they want to they put these in. Yeah really hard before, whereas the new one, you just replace some graphics files, and you re restart it, and there's your new graphics. 
Um, but there are trade-offs. Um, the the Pi, because uh, it's all written in Python, the performance isn't isn't up to snuff. But uh, I'll be working on it. Oh, these look great. It's fun. It, it responds to light as well. I don't know if you can see the pupils. Um. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, a wire popped out. So they're not responding to light right now. There's a... But you also have like a joystick option where you can control the direction. Yeah, you can, you can blink it manually. You can move the eyes manually. But right now, I have it all kind of on autopilot. There are some stuffed animals that have a whole new future in store for them now. I've seen that. There's like these toys coming out now that have LCD eyes. In yeah. It. And I, I want to say it's creepy, but I can't complain because, you know, yeah. no, it's on my desk. It's, it's like kinda, your fault. It's kind of what we do for a living. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much, all. Thanks, Phil. Yeah. Uh, we're going to go to Brian and we'll wrap up with C. Scott. Hey, Brian. How's it going? Hey, can you hear me? Yep. Yeah. What you got going okay. on? So I've been working on a project using RGB LED matrices and the LED matrix hat for the Raspberry Pi and some Python script. It goes out and pulls some RSS news feeds, aggregates those. Uh, the most important feature is, since I live in Hawaii, I need to keep on tabs of the weather for any severe weather alerts. So it goes out to the National Weather Service, pulls their XML files, and if there happens to be an advisory or a watch or a warning, it'll interrupt everything and um, flash alert a couple times and scroll the message. So let me show it to you here. So that's it scrolling there. Sorry, it's backwards. No, we see it right. Yeah, well, Disney. Yeah. Okay, well, my screen's backwards for some reason. So right now it's scrolling the news, and it has the date and the time on the top. Now you can go to a website here, submit a message, and then after it breaks with the last news scroll, it'll do this twice, and then it'll display the message saying, hello, add a fruit. And it just gets fed over from a Raspberry Pi web server over to the other Raspberry Pi, and it gets put into a flat file, and if there's multiple in there, it'll just do it in order and write it off. So after this, it should display what I just sent over there. That's a huge um, matrix. That looks great. Yeah, it's two uh, six, uh, 32 by 64s. So it says it's a web message, so I knew it came from the web. That's cool. Hello. <laughs> Yeah, so that's something I've been working on. The last thing I have to do is just put it into a nice little case, which I'll probably laser cut out some wood. And there goes my camera. <laughs> <laughs> well, excellent project, Ryan. When you're all finished, send us some photos um, to support at Adafruit.com. And of course, send an email to support at Adafruit.com. And we'll send you out a you know, show and tell sticker. OK. It's okay. big enough for a sticker. Yeah, you got plenty of room there. All right, see so Scott, place out. What you got going on? Hey, guys. Um, I'm recovering from a pretty nasty flu, so. Hopefully, yeah, yeah, I'm coming across okay. Yeah, thank you for Can the PCBs. Yeah, thank you for the PCBs. By the way, we're going through all the presents that we got over the holidays. Thank you for those. Sure, they sent you a book. Yes. You keep talking about Dune, and I said you need to be reading Cord Winter Smith. Yep. So, and the more needs to check her email. I sent her a book too. Yep. Um, uh, I know you get like 10 billion emails an hour. So anyway, uh, it's my uh, phase shifter is finished. And uh, in fact, the production ports for arrive tomorrow. But this device here is my face shifter. I'll get the camera a little closer if I can. Uh, it, I showed you the circuit a couple of weeks back. I can get my, my hand. Uh, but it's just a, a four-stage um, unit. It's built from a design from 1975. And it sounds like this is using the Atmel 328P string generator module to feed it. But it basically sounds like this. So, um, am I still there? Yeah. yeah. Okay, my picture went funny there. But uh, like I said, I'm going to be uh, seeing how many of those I can uh, sell both. I want to do a DIY where people buy the board, and I'm also making a circuit board front panel because I got a really good deal on the uh, copperless PCB. Uh, but in addition, I want, I talked about this before, I want to improve string uh, generator by using um, 
a uh, <clears throat> here are the pads for a Feather M Zero, and I wanted to. I've showed you this before. I want to send a choice of either its 10-bit back or a 16-bit PWM out through this four pole filter to to use 32-bit math instead of 8-bit uh, math and get a, a bit cleaner, uh, um, more high-resolution tone. But I thought about it a little bit further, and I said, you know what? I want to tweak your feather a little bit because I really, really need pin 14. This is the M-clock pin of the I2S module, mm -hmm. and most I2S peripherals use it. In this case, I want to make one. In fact, I might just stick the chip on the board here and place your holes. Um, I want to use a stereo DAC chip that has a built-in oversampling filter, which cleans up the carrier for me, part CS4334. But I'll let you know how that goes. I'm going to have uh, C make a couple of these for me and see how they work. What I did here was, and it would be interesting, I guess it did. I'll say I have a little resistor that's in line with pin 14, and I stole your ground pin down here, but I still left ground functionality. If you fuse this link with solder, it turns it back into a ground pin. But this now becomes the M clock pin, so you use you know, your clock and data and your master clock, and then the uh, data pin comes off of like pin 9. But uh, we'll see how that goes. i got to get one of these made first. Um, and then... I want to make a module, if you're going back to this circuit board, I want to make a module that uses the feather, but it'll have the DAC chip either on the feather itself or on this board. And I can bring, I have a little OLED display and some switches and knobs. Just I want to make it a generic, general purpose. Not only can it do this string machine stuff, but you can do <coughs> other oscillator uh, envelope or oscillator wave shape types, or you can just do table lookup or uh, uh, wave table synthesis of, uh, of various uh, forms. Like I said, it's a building block. We're trying to make it really simple so it's not something daunting for someone to build. Now, this is the all through hole version. Let's get uh, this is the through hole version. I want to make a all surface mount version so I can. I don't want to make people have to build these things. They can just go say, okay, here's this, plug the feather in the back, uh, pop it into the PCB panel, put it in your modular, and have fun. So Yeah, actually, today uh, I was looking at I2S, and I, I realized the M-Clock pin wasn't broken out. And I don't actually have my uh, I2S amp doesn't use M-Clock, but I realized, like, oh, you know, that was, like, the one peripheral that I didn't expose. So I might revise the Feather M0s because I want to make a, mm -hmm. other, I want to make a power supply change anyways. Right. Um, so I might swap one of the pins. Yeah. Or I might change that ground pin. To, it looked like you were thinking along those lines already because when I look at your schematic, you already named the signal. You just didn't bring it to a pin. Yeah. So, yeah, bring D3 out, and 90% of I2S chips use it because it drives oversampling filters. And oh. if it's like a if it's like a constant calibrating DAC, it, it re requires a really high clock rate to, okay. to do the calibration. But anyway, you know, you, you get I'll that. Think about it. Yeah, like I, I'm, 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 a lot of the Feather stuff is being revised because I'm learning stuff. And like as people are using it, I'm like, oh, like I want to um, upgrade and change it. And it's not a, it, if I have D3 brought out, then, you know, you don't, if it's connected to ground, it's, you know, it's fine. It's not, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. Well, I was trying to do something that didn't break the standard you would established. And I said, you know, you've got two ground pins. I'll steal one. But you can still turn it back into a yeah, ground. Yeah, that pin. pin's a free pin. I actually use it for different things, you know, like on Bluetooth, it's DFU or something. So I, I also might exchange one of the internal pins mm -hmm. um, because uh, I might be able, like, you know, with the SAMD, you can rename. You can have two pins be the same pin. Right, right. I was... I was looking at the way it wasn't quite as nice as I'd hoped. I wanted it to be like, you've got a peripheral, you've got a pin, assign them. You know, I just wanted any pin to be rattleable to any peripheral, but they, they have some rules about which ones. Yeah, there's a couple rules. What. And then clock is the one that there's only one pin that does it, I think, too. I think the, the other clock and the other data pins, they have a bunch of options. All right, well, mm -hmm. it's good. Now I'm getting good feedback. Okay. okay. I'll right. use it. No, I promise you that. That's sweet. <laughs> All right. Well, but that's it for me. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Richard. Thank you, Phil. Thank you, Pedro. Thank you, John. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, Ryan. We're here every single week. We're going to do Ask an Engineer in just a few minutes. Um, I think someone just came in at the very end. Just come back next week. We yep. do this every single week. If you're on the show and tell, email support at adafruit.com, and we'll send you an as-seen on-show and tell sticker. And 
I said this last week, but I'll say it again. Thank you, everyone who's on the show last year. And thank you for giving us something amazing and special to look forward to. In 2017, we'll keep it weird if y'all keep building stuff. More eyes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, cool shirt. Yeah. All you want, all design more. 